talk about the future, right? 2020 is ending. I think it's fair for us to give our prediction for 2021. So why don't you talk a little bit about Bitcoin and Ethereum and, you know, just the old, you know, even the alternative investments within the space and alt altcoins. Uh, where do you see that with those going? Sure. Yeah, I think Bitcoin will lead the pack um, when you have new upside in the market enter. It's going to be through Bitcoin only initially. Um, as it always is, you know, the cycle plays out that way usually is that liquidity, the engine starts with Bitcoin and then kind of siphons out to different coins over time where risk ch risk factors change. I think, you know, look, I, I think I, I can't remember if I said it on, on the last show, but, I, you know, I thought when we broke 20,000 and I wrote about this as well back in uh, August and I did a Bitcoin specific blog post and I wrote about how once we pass the 20,000 range, mm -hmm. that is when the institutions will look at, and it sounds funny to people because, you know, obviously institutions, you would think, oh, they're going to buy down on 3000, but actually it gets, and Bill Miller is a uh, famous investor. He talked about this. He's one of the old school investors who, who bought Bitcoin a long time ago, but he said, you know, as the price goes up, the risk actually kind of goes down because the price is actually representative of adoption, the sentiment around the network, the strength of the mining network, everything. Right. So a lot of the institutions will jump in after 20, not to mention even just the price psychology of that. Everyone mm -hmm. thought that ceiling was at 20 and we would crash. I, I knew so many people. I actually honestly didn't think we would break 20 this year. I, so I was actually wrong about it. I thought it would be early next year. I thought we would consolidate. But I know a lot of people who thought, oh, it's just going to sell back to, you know, at 20 is going to get rejected. Double top. You had Peter Schiff coming out. Double top, which is <laughs> double tops are not a thing, guys. It, 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 it's not exactly a thing. It's, it's not. And double bottoms aren't a thing either. It's not nonsense, okay? Um, <laughs> you know, you can make a chart look like anything you want. So anyways, so, I, you know, I think we're, we're in price discovery mode where I think you're going to have uh, the, the usual choppiness in any of these markets. You're going to have upside and then sell-offs, upside sell-offs. You know, I don't want to dig into altcoins too much. I think that, you know, references, uh, maybe reference in a different uh, session, but... Um, you know, altcoins have more risk, you know, Bitcoin's by far the best risk adjusted investment in the space followed by Ethereum. Everything else is much more leveraged kind of feel where, you know, uh, volatile is going to, it's going to maybe grow faster, but it's going to crash faster too, or correct faster. And so you're going to see these cycles play out where we go up, you know, maybe to 30 K and then we pull back to, for Bitcoin, we pull back to 22, something like that, right? Just as an mm -hmm. example. So, um, yeah, let's see who's, who has the strong hands. And I, I, I just think um, you're, you're, we're still early in the sense that I think we're about a year out from really seeing things go into a mania, potentially. I don't want to call time frame. I don't like that. But mm -hmm. approximately 12 to 18 months, uh, maybe. And um, I, I just think we're early in the sense that you're going to see more announcements, institutions, adoption. You're going to see these guys double down. You're going to see squares of the world. Buy more. We and we we didn't mention PayPal, which isn't exactly institutional buying, but that's the retail side. So you're going to see more things like PayPal infrastructure. Who's accepting it now? Yeah. It's just accepted part of society, and we've hit escape. I think 20k is escape velocity. That's what I like to say. I have a whole blog post coming out about this actually as well soon uh, about escape velocity once we're here, and that's why we're hearing from the regulators. It all ties in because the regulators are coming now because of escape velocity. It's exactly tied together. So. I think it's a really interesting time and we have large buyers at very healthy high levels mm -hmm. taking supply off the table. It's very simple supply and demand here. Now, just to play devil's advocate, we could see a, a large pullback in the market where everything correlates again like it did in March 2020 because of COVID. I just think there's probably more upside in the stock market as well. I think we're almost going to have this roaring, roaring 20s type yeah. of feel which ironically in, 1920, in the 1920s, it, it followed the Spanish influenza. Now we're following. Now I don't want to be that guy who just points to history and says it repeats, but um, it, there's something to be said about that because you're going to have large stimulus. You're going to have tons of liquidity injected into the markets. Like I said, all these companies are going to be addicted to that. And that's very good for the Bitcoin narrative, yeah. whether you like it or not. It just is. And Bitcoin isn't causing that. We're not, we're not hoping for that. I don't want to see the dollar collapse. And I don't think it's going to collapse, by no. the way. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying it's going to, but most Bitcoiners don't necessarily, uh, some do. Okay. I will say some do. Um, 
but most people want to see society still do very well. We're not betting on the end of the world. Yeah. We're just saying things are going to change. And this captures that change in a, in a very unique way. It captures that and it captures the value of that change in a very unique way. So I'm, I'm, I'm bullish if you can't hear it. Uh, obviously I am. Um, but again, it's going to be a choppy up, you know, the upside is going to be choppy. So there's going to be a bunch of people freaking out when it, when it pulls back, but yeah, I'm, I'm in it for the long run regardless. So. Absolutely. And I think, uh, you know, Fazan, thank you so much for your thoughts. Yeah, thank the you. Episode. Uh, but, you know, I guess I'll leave out, leave off our listeners to one point. Uh, is Bitcoin going to hit six figures, right? Is Guggenheim CIO 400K price analysis correct? No one knows. Nobody knows. But I think based off the current trend that we've seen with Bitcoin and the, the emergence of a lot of institutional investors, if you guys who are familiar with um, the technology adoption, there's something called the S curve, right? Where you have at a certain point institutional adopters come in. I think, you know, I agree with Fazan. It, this is a lot earlier than I expected, but we've hit that point where you're seeing the institutional adoption come in, but there's still this legitimate level of growth that's still available. And that is kind of what we're going to see over the next few years. Um, so there is still a chance if you're wondering if it's too late, it's not. Um, I absolutely believe that people should continue to dollar cost average in. Um, if you're in a position to put up a certain percentage of your net worth in, I would say it's fair to do so as well. Again, this is not investment advice. It's just personally, if you want to learn about it, there's no better way to learn than having your getting your hands dirty.